Today, we're going to be talking about the United States of Qatar. Assalamu alaikum everyone, Mr. Q, your friendly neighborhood Qatar here, and today we're going to be talking about the eight municipalities of Qatar. I know I said states, but I just wanted you to click play, okay? I'm just I'm just being honest. You content addicted clickbaiters. Fantastic piece of clickbait. You suckers got served. So different countries call the different divisions of their land a different name. So in America, they're states, and in states you've got like counties. In China, they've got provinces. In Japan, they've got prefectures. Here in Qatar, we've got beledias or municipalities. And we're gonna explain what makes each one special. Have you noticed the World Cup logo looks like an 8-2? All right, let's start off with the easy one. Well, let's just kick off with something nice okay. and easy, okay? Let's start with the easy stuff. Let's start off nice and easy. Doha. Everybody knows Doha not only is it the capital of Qatar, but of course it's the oldest municipality too. Established in 1963, the population over a million people. A million people down there. It's a city with a population of a million people. You know, that is a lot of people. Yes, the majority of people here in Qatar live in Doha. So how big is Doha? Around 220 square kilometers. This is where you find the beautiful Corniche, you find Souq Waqif, you can find the beautiful skyline, the National Museum of Qatar, Hamad Medical City, Qatara Cultural Village, MIA, the Amiri Diwan, which is our version of the White House. You find the financial centers, the administrative centers, you find a lot of the ministries, even embassies too. But of course, you can't find everything in Doha. Let's talk about the rest. That's not all. I'm just getting started. What more is that? Next up, let's talk about Al Rayyan. Now I know a lot of people might have heard of the Al Rayyan football team, but here's a really cool fact. It's where you can find the sports centers like Aspire, Aspire Park, Khalifa Stadium, even the Torch, the Torch Hotel that was created, but there was multiple reasons for that, you know, including for the Asian games, and it was a big giant, let's just look, look at it, look at it, it's huge. Just, you see it? We also have the anti-doping lab, and then you've got educational institutions like Qatar Foundation, HBKU, and of course, the Qatar National Library. Now we mentioned that Doha is 220 square kilometers, Rayan, 2,450. That's huge. So big and pretty. It's huge. It is so awesome. Now as of 2015, the population was over 600,000, and of course, that must have grown by now. This municipality was founded in 1972. Oh, and also I should mention that if you're from Rayan, you're known as Rayani. In the house. And you know how we do it. How we live in our church. Number three is Umm Aslal. Now, Umm means mother, and Aslal means a big rock or a boulder. So clearly somebody saw a big rock and was like, whoa. That's the mother of rocks. Now, Umm Aslal has a lot of rock formations. So if you're a geologist, maybe that's the place that you would like to explore more than others. It's 318 square kilometers and the population is around 100,000. Next up, we've got Al Khor. Now, Al Khor is a place that a lot of people like going to because they've got what? Mangroves. They've also got a place called Purple Island. And guess why it's called Purple Island? Show them, Tim. Al Khor means bay, and it was established in 1972. Now, of course, if you go ahead to the mangroves, you can go kayaking, you can enjoy the beautiful nature. I mean, it's really amazing to see how the mangroves have created this natural filtration system. And that's why it's really important for you to be a part of different volunteer groups like DEEP, for example, D-E-A-P, and help clean the mangroves. Keep it clean, because, you know, sometimes garbage from the sea moves in through the mangroves, and mangroves, as I said, as a natural filter, just catches everything. So we need to help the mangrove. Help the mangrove. Save the mangroves. Come on, think about it. We'll save the environment. And talk. Save the planet. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Now, a lot of people have often asked me if that's where you can also find the flamingos. Nope. Yes, we do have flamingos. A lot of people get surprised. Here, take a look at some of these pics. Where you can find them is actually in Al Karana. So this area is off of Selwa Road, and Selwa Road is a super long road. Uh, maybe we'll put a link in the description below. So check it out. Now the size of Al Khor is roughly 1,600 square kilometers, and around 200,000 people live there. I think around 250,000 now. I actually really enjoy going to Al Khor. There's a little mall over there. You've got this own little promenade, like a little mini corniche that you can go and check out. And plus there are some world heritage spots that you can check out. So things that you can also check out while you're there include the Al Khor Museum, Creek Park, which is around 240 acres big, Al Khor Sports Club, and the Sultan Beach. 
or as some people might say, the Sultan Beach. So it's a really chill place to go. The environment just feels chill, you know what I mean? People chillax. It's kind of chill. Is it safe and chill? Number five, is it Wekra? Now, people who are from Wekra are known as Wekrawis. Wekra Puriba. So Wekra was originally known because it was a small pearling and fishing village. That's why when you arrive at Wekra, you'll see that in the center, you've got this clam, this pearl in the middle. Now, over time, it has grown to become the second largest municipality based on size. So I guess if you want to be special, go to Wekra, because you know there's less competition, you know what I mean? You are unique. You are truly unique. Why are we the only ones still here? So you go to Wekra for a number of different reasons. One, so you can check out the brand new Al Janoub Stadium, also known as Wekra Stadium. Of course, you can also go to Sug Al Wekra, that's the Sug Wagif of Wekra, which is pretty cool. It looks like a souk on the beach. It's also known as Heritage Souk. You can go there for Al Wekra Fort too. And of course, if you're looking for some small mom and pop shops, that's where you need to go. Well, what's so great about a mom and pop store? They're the best! Let's hit it! Number six is the Dayan municipality. You might call it Al Dayan, because that's how it's spelled. And how many people do you think live in Dayan? Around 55,000. Now, in that municipality, you can find all the Lucille stuff. Yes, we're talking about Lucille City. We're talking about the, oh, entertainment village or entertainment city as well. You've got Energy City project happening over there. So if you're into sports, you're gonna like Lucille Sports Arena. It looks really nice and it's next to the Lucille Sports Circuit. Now this circuit is actually where you can have the MotoGP races. So if you love motorbiking or if you like cars, but you wanna race your own car on a professional circuit, that's where you go. That's also where you can find the Lucille Iconic Stadium, also known as the Lucille National Stadium for the World Cup. Oh, and also if you're in that area and you like to shoot some guns, you can go to the shooting range. Don't worry, it's completely controlled. It's not like you just randomly pick up a gun and start shooting things. No, it's in a controlled environment. Which, by the way, is the only place where you can just pick up a gun and shoot it. Unlike other countries, I'm just saying. What does that mean? What are you trying to say? Pry it from my cold, dead hands. And have you heard of a place called Doha Festival City? They've got five guys, super delicious burgers. This is a tasty burger. So delicious. How do you guys make them so yummy? Next up is a Shamal. Now, Shamal is on the northern part of Qatar, appropriately named. So yeah, Shamal literally means north. Shamal also has the least population out of all of the municipalities. In fact, you'll find a lot of unpopulated villages there. And that's good because that's where you can find the Arim Biosphere Reserve. It's also where you can find the Castle of Zubara. Go and check it out. It is really majestic. Now, there are two special moments that happen there. I'm sure there's more as well, but one of them is when all of the turtles come in so that they can lay their eggs and the government comes in and creates these walls and fences to make sure that they're all protected and you can go and check it out. But make sure that you take care when you're walking around. Like, don't jump over the fence. You might piss off Master Splinter. Watch out for turtles. I did something really stupid, Master Splinter. I like turtles. Now with this second event, you might not need to be as careful, but I was told a lot of Japanese people go there because that's where you can find soft shell crabs. So like they go there like, mmm, crabs, and then they just eat. I, I, I don't know, do you eat the shell? Do you eat the sh Japanese people tell me, do you eat the shell? What kind of a question is that? You serious right now? You are outside your mind. Last but not least is a Shahaniya. In 2014, it split off from a Rayan. It was like a Rayan was like that. And then all of a sudden, Shahaniya was like, you know what, I'm gonna do my own thing. And so basically, Shahaniya comprises of 35% of the old Rayan. So Shahaniya got its name from a local plant known as Sheet. Sheet. This Sheet plant was very special for its anti-inflammatory properties. So it's like our version of aloe vera. Now people usually associate Shahaniya with camel racing. Oh yes, that's where you can go and attend the races and be like, I want, we don't have Seabiscuit. We've got a sand cracker. <laughs> oh, and also side little fun fact. Do you know that they use robots to ride the camels? Robots, I'm not joking. And it's also where they breed the oryx, oryxes. O oryxi, just just oryx. Singular, plural. Figure it out, son. I mean, how hard is it? Oh, when you're on the corniche in Doha, make sure you take a look at Ori the oryx and be like, hey, say hi to your family at the Shahaniya. Say hi to your mom. Say hi to your mother for me, okay? Say hello to your mother. 
Say hi to your mother for me. So if you're heading over to that area, that's where you can also find the Sheikh Faisal bin Qasim Al Thani Museum. It's a really, really, really cool museum. Go and check it out. You can find a Dosseri Zoo and Game Reserve. Anyway, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Q-Tips, and I want to hear from you. Where do you live? Let me know your municipality down below. And of course, everyone, if you enjoyed this Q-tip, please don't forget to like, don't forget to share, and of course, subscribe. And if you see that bell, be like, hey, don't make me divide you into eight municipalities. You want to stay whole? Click it. All right, everyone. Mas